Hello, and welcome to this whirlwind tour of MongoDB Atlas on Google Cloud. My name is Mark Smith, and I'm a senior developer advocate at MongoDB. I'm going to spend a few minutes showing you how to set up a MongoDB cluster on Google Cloud, how to think about your data model when using the MongoDB database, and then I'm going to talk about some of the extra features you get with MongoDB Atlas over and above just the database. Finally, We'll deploy a simple web application on App Engine, showing you how to connect your cloud application to a MongoDB Atlas cluster. OK, so here I've logged into uh, cloud.mongodb.com, uh, and this gives me the cluster dashboard for MongoDB Atlas. And as you can see here, I already have a couple of clusters running in my account. But just to show you how it works, let's go over to the right hand side and click the Create button to start up a new MongoDB cluster. So here I've selected a dedicated cluster, so this will be um, some virtual servers that are dedicated to my MongoDB databases where I'm not sharing the cluster with anybody else. I'm going to select Google Cloud because I want to host this data close to my cloud application that I'm going to be spinning up towards the end of this video. Um, and because I'm based in Edinburgh in Scotland, a sensible region for me to um, host this database is in Europe West 2, which is in London. M30 is a little bit large for my requirements here. So this is really just a development cluster that I'm setting up. So I'm going to set up an M10. In a production environment, I can also configure um, automatic scaling. So this means that as the cluster um, starts to get significant load, it might scale up. Um, or if the cluster is currently very quiet, it might scale down with absolutely no downtime. And it just minimizes your costs, but maximizes your kind of scaling flexibility. I don't actually need that for a development cluster, so I'm just going to turn that off. Um, and then finally, um, I'm going to set it to run the latest version of MongoDB, which is 5.2, which has some excellent new features. And I'm going to give the cluster a name of um, Atlas GCP demo. And that's really just for my own reference. Now I'm going to hit create cluster and it's going to move on to the next page and we're going to see the cluster is being created and it says that they're currently taking about seven to ten minutes to provision. So while that's going on, let's have a quick conversation about documents. MongoDB is a document database and that kind of means that the atom that you're storing in MongoDB is a document. So whereas a relational database stores rows in tables, MongoDB stores documents in collections. And this is a single document we're looking at here, and I've rendered it kind of as a JSON document. So if you've worked with JSON or similar structures before, you'll feel quite comfortable with the way that you navigate through a single MongoDB document. This is my favorite document. It represents a one minute movie released in 1893. And there's a couple of things I'd like to highlight. So firstly, there's this field called underscore ID, which is the unique primary key for this document. Every single document has an ID which uniquely identifies it within a collection. It will always have the name underscore ID, and it'll be auto-generated if you don't supp supply one. If, however, you have something that uniquely identifies a document that will never change, that has some kind of logical meaning that's useful to you, then you can supply your own value here if you want to. This document contains several scalar values, and by scalar I mean there's only one atomic value that can't really be broken up. I guess you could break up a string into a series of characters, but that's not really the way we think of storing strings in databases. What's more interesting, if you're coming from a traditional table-based database, is some of the values aren't scalar. In this case, the cast and director fields both contain arrays. Cast is an array with two values. And directors, although it only contains one value, is still an array to indicate that more than one director can be found in this field sometimes. That's an important thing to note. I could have stored a string in this field instead of an array, and then in another document I could have an array with, say, two strings in it. But that's generally not a good idea. It makes managing the data very difficult when you have documents with different value types stored in the same collection. You can, but you should generally avoid it if you can. So an array is a sequence of items in order. The individual elements in an array are looked up by their location in the array. But sometimes you want the individual items to each have a name. So here in the IMDB field, you can see that the value is an object, or what we call in MongoDB a subdocument. Items in a subdocument have a name to look them up. 
In this case, imdb.rating would be 6.2 and imdb.id would be 5. Subdocuments are a useful way of grouping related data together. The benefit of storing data in a single document like this, as well as speed of lookup, is that you can update multiple parts of a document in one go, atomically, automatically. MongoDB also supports joining documents within or across collections and using transactions when doing so, if you wish. But if you're joining a lot or using transactions a lot, then it's an indication that you're not necessarily modeling your data correctly for MongoDB. Let's go back to the Atlas cluster dashboard. You can see here that my Atlas GCP demo cluster has finished starting up. Let's click on Browse Collections and have a quick look at the data. So I've loaded in some sample data here. Uh, there's a bunch of different sample databases. The one um, that holds my favorite document is the sample Mflix uh, database, uh, which has the movies collection. And it just so happens that the first movie document in here is the document that I just showed you. There's a bunch of things I can do in here. I can configure my indexes uh, for this collection. Um, the Atlas will tell you when you've got some bad designs in your data that it can recognize um, based on your usage patterns. You can also run complex aggregation queries to kind of um, group and uh, make calculations based uh, on your data. Um, and you can create search indexes that allow you to essentially create a search engine on top of the data that's in your collections. And there's a bunch of other, other features here that I don't have time to go into. To, um, that are part of your Atlas subscription. You also have access to MongoDB Realm, which is a mobile and web toolkit built on top of MongoDB. There's also Charts, which is a powerful data analytics and charting platform. But now let's go back to Overview and click on the Connect button. This gives me the information that I need to connect to my MongoDB cluster from whatever application I'm building. So if I click on Connect Your Application, because I'm going to be connecting from a Python application, it gives me the connection string that's required, in this case for Python, but also for a whole load of different platforms. This URI needs to have its username and password filled in, um, and it also defaults to this My First Database database, whereas I, in fact I want to connect to the sample Mflix database. But if I copy and paste this um, into my application, it's a good start. Now let's jump over to my code editor to look at my App Engine project. So here I started with the classic um, App Engine Python project. Um, so it's just a Hello World project. And I've added some stuff to integrate that project with my MongoDB Atlas cluster. So the first thing I did was open up the requirements file uh, and add this requirement for the PyMongo driver, which is the Python driver for connecting to MongoDB. I've added this SRV optional dependency, which is not optional for MongoDB Atlas. Then I went into the application configuration file, and I've added my URI in here. Now I've added my user credentials. Don't worry, by the time you see this, these credentials will no longer be valid. Um, and at the end, I've changed the database from my first database to this sample Mflix database that we were just looking at. And then finally, I've gone into the Python code and I've made some changes. So the first thing is I've imported Mongo client from the PyMongo driver, and then I've just configured it here using the environment variable that's being provided by the App Engine configuration file. That gives me a client which can connect to any database in my cluster. I only want to uh, select the sample Mflix database, so I'm calling get default database to get the one that, from the URI. And then finally, in the endpoint here, I'm calling aggregate, which is one of the MongoDB query API commands, and I'm passing it a pipeline of operations to run on the movies collection. So first, I'm filtering out any documents that don't have a rating, um, then I'm grouping those documents by rating, and then finally I'm sorting them in descending order of rating. And then I'm passing that on to render template, and I've just created a template to render these results in an HTML table. Now I've already deployed this, um, so I can simply run um, gcloud app browse to load this up in a web browser. And there you have it, we have my application running on Google Cloud connected to my MongoDB Atlas cluster also running in Google Cloud. I hope you enjoyed this whirlwind tour of MongoDB on Google Cloud and hope I've inspired you to fire up a MongoDB cluster and build something awesome. My name is Mark Smith. You can find me on Twitter as Judy2K where I tweet about Python, Rust and MongoDB. Or even better, check out the MongoDB community forums at community.mongodb.com.